to the channel and welcome to our review of the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3. Ooh, are you serious? We're going to review another MJJC Foam Cannon? Oh man, if, if you're joking, I swear... Keith, hey Keith, relax! We're really reviewing the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3. Look, it, it's right here. Yes, you know... It's no secret, I really liked using the foam cannon during the fourth day of our Car Care Tech Week. That was a couple years ago, but I remember it. And heck, I even love just telling people I was using a foam cannon. I mean, that's a cool thing to do. I don't... I struggle with the name MJJC. It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but the foam cannon, that's a cool thing. Oh, I remember, Keith. So what do you say we jump right in and talk about the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3? Yeah, sure thing. Now, people might remember we had reviewed the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro V2 a couple of years ago. Um, that device was one that Bruce had purchased and had used for a little bit prior to reviewing it for the channel. Now, this time around, MJJC uh, reached out to us and offered to send the Foam Cannon S V3 version 3. Uh, to Bruce for review. So, you know, they gave us no parameters around providing the product for review so we can give our completely honest opinions on the device. And lastly, our viewers may also be wondering uh, where the Foam Cannon S V3 fits uh, in the product lineup, for example, compared to the Pro V2. Good point, Keith. Technically speaking, the Pro V2 is the top of the line device from MJJC and the S version 3 is a step down. Um, I think you'll see from our testing that the performance of the Canon uh, S version 3 is really on par with the Pro V2. Now, on top of getting the device to review, they didn't even send us paperwork to sign to get the unit. Literally none. Yeah, the performance characteristics caught me off guard a bit between the top of the line and the next model down. Uh, however, there are other features that aren't necessarily better on the Pro V2, but different than the Canon SV3. So we'll do our best to highlight those as we go forward if it doesn't make sense right now. But uh, you, our viewers, can decide which of these two might be better for you. Perfect, Keith. So let's jump into my driveway where uh, we set up for the testing. We'll cover the testing methodology and some of the issues I ran into with my Pro V2, as well as how to correct and prevent those problems. Here is the MJJC. Foam Cannon S version 3. The first thing we're going to do is uh, take the uh, included 1.1 millimeter orifice and swap that out with the 1.25 that ships installed because that is the orifice size that I am using in the MJJC uh, Pro. Uh, Canon. So I want to make sure that we are keeping uh, our comparison apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So all you have to do is use a screwdriver, a flat blade, and remove the orifice from this uh, section. Ultimately what we'll end up doing is installing the connector to the uh, trigger handle that uh, we are going to utilize. So let me just get this out of the bag. We are going to put the 1.25 into here, and we just uh, place this in here, make sure it's straight, and we will screw this in until it stops, and we'll make sure it's tight, but not too much pressure on it. And then uh, what we'll do is open up the zip bag that has our connection on it and they've given us a couple of extra washers for it but there's already one installed so we are going to put our extra washers aside also into the pocket there we go and then we will simply screw this on until it is there we go. So, this will then install. Uh, one thing you'll find is you don't have to 
screw this a whole lot. It basically has like a quick connect. So not a lot of uh, turning you have to do. That is a nice um, upgrade, if you will. And then we are going to measure out the fluid for both of our devices. I've got two exact measuring cups, so we will be getting to that next. Okay, so I've measured 900 milliliters into the Model S. I'm actually going to pour this into here and then fill this back up to 900 milliliters just because it is easier to see, uh, as I'll illustrate here, it's easier to see where you are from a capacity standpoint on the Model S version 3 versus the Pro. And then we'll be filling the last So I don't know if you can see that, probably not very well, but that is the 900 milliliters in this device. And it helps when you have soap that's colored because then uh, on, on the Pro device, you can actually uh, see that a little bit better. So then let's put 900 milliliters into the Model S. Look at that. Okay, there are now 900 milliliters in each of the devices. We'll now go ahead and pour our soap in. And you can see this is going to raise us up over the 1,000 milliliters or one liter mark. by about 25 milliliters. And now into this device. And now you can see uh, with a soap with some color to it that now it becomes much easier to tell how much fluid uh, in total is in the Pro device. And give this a good little bit of time to uh, completely drip out. Okay. Obviously, we have just a little bit. You know, if I was going to do this for a car wash for home and I wasn't doing this uh, as a contest, I'd probably just. Um, put the soap in and then rinse out the container, dump that the contents into my foam cannon device. And uh, this is very nice. I don't know if you could see that really well, but uh, this just twists right on. Uh, it's really kind of a quick connect. And then um, on the Pro, for comparison, I have to actually twist. Not that that's a huge deal, it doesn't take much, uh, and then you get that nice and tight. Um, I also like that you can tell, um, no, I don't have a completely watertight seal there. Uh, let me see here, let's see if there's a uh, washer. There is something up there, but, uh, <laughs> so it's something to be aware of that you might have to use a little bit more care with uh, with the S model versus the Pro. If I go to shake this up, you can see I can tilt this around to mix up my soap and there's no leaking. Um, I get some leakage out of the uh, out of the S. So something to be just mindful of. <laughs> This seems like another public service announcement here under the don't do what Bruce did category. Uh, but again, Bruce makes these mistakes so that you don't have to. Regardless of the model, you want to thoroughly rinse the chemical container with clean water. Uh, 
can't emphasize that enough. Uh, and you have to rinse it until you don't see any signs of soap re residual in there, right? That's the one of the keys. Spot on, Keith. I'm here for everyone. Um, I had a really bad, I mean really, really bad habit of not finishing um, all the soap in the bottle, especially when washing the Mustang because of its size, then storing the foam cannon for the uh, next time, uh, which could be weeks before I was washing a car again. Um, that's bad. Really bad. Yeah, it is bad. I wish I was more of a chemistry knowledgeable person to know why that's bad. I mean, it is just soapy water. You wouldn't normally think that that's bad, but it is bad. So what you're supposed to do is, you know, once the, once you're done washing, you're supposed to empty it out, refill it with fresh water, uh, the entire liter, like both both of the MJJC foam cannon models hold a liter. Uh, so you're, you fill it up with fresh water and uh, then connect the foam cannon to your pressure washer again. Under pressure. Uh, and then you just run it for a full 30 seconds. Now, through the course of normal use, you will likely need to swap the filter in the housing, although MJJC does say that they've made some, you know, adjustments in those filters and uh, them being changed out isn't, you know, far as, as far important as it used to be. Um, but for sure, you're going to, you know, need to replace the chemical straw, right? Or the uh, intake tube, as Keith likes to call it. Yeah, Keith is very opinionated about what things are called. But yes, uh, MJJC sells the spare parts and accessories on their website, and that's linked in the description below. Yeah, and we'll uh, visit that topic more in uh, just a bit, and we'll discuss the extras that people might want to purchase for their foam cannon. Yeah, so just to kind of describe Bruce's testing protocol here a little bit, he worked on three different vehicles, right? He, as he already mentioned, he worked on the Mustang convertible, so that was one. Uh, he also did some testing on the uh, Taurus, right, with, with both cannons, so that's another test. And then the third test, which actually I think was the first one that he actually did, was on the van, or on the, the minivan. And... Partially, I think, because it was the first thing that he tested, the minivan, it didn't quite go as planned. So after the failed uh, van testing event, I did clean my foam cannon uh, Pro version 2 and retested it on the Taurus. Um, it performed much closer to how it did on the uh, original Car Care Tech Week uh, review from a couple of years ago, but uh, maybe not up to the, uh, you know, when it was brand new level. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how I'm addressing that in just a bit. Yeah, and just the way all this testing happened, right, when Bruce started with the, with the minivan, it didn't turn out so well for the original foam cannon from MJJC, the V2, the Pro V2. But it was because it really wasn't cleaned properly. It wasn't set up correctly. So it really wasn't a fair fight. Um, when it came to, you know, redoing it, well, he didn't redo it on the minivan because it was already clean. But once he got to the Taurus, Bruce did do both foam cannons on the Taurus out of fairness. And that's the video that we have playing right now. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of interesting that they perform pretty close to each other overall. Uh, it's a huge compliment, actually, for the uh, SV3. It's, you know, a huge compliment, considering it's supposed to be a kind of a little brother. Once we got to the, um, to the Mustang, we didn't do the head-to-head -head comparison because, you know, we just had already done the comparison on the Taurus. Future Bruce here. Just wanted to uh, quickly let you know that I have uh, some additional bonus video for you. I did get the replacement chemical straw for my MJJC Pro version 2. So I ran a test with this so you could see what it looked like with that uh, straw replaced. Um, I may still need to replace the filters in the, uh, in the rest of the mechanism, but uh, you'll see from the results the straw replacement did uh, help in that process. So uh, here is that additional bonus video. Both these devices currently sell for the same amount. So which device you prefer is going to come down to your personal preferences and not performance. Duh. Well, yeah, isn't it always? I, mean, I guess I get your point. These devices provide nearly identical, if not identical results. So it is going to come down to things like, I don't know, the bottle design, the twist versus the screw on top, which we'll get into in a bit, uh, and maybe even the color, 
of the units, things like that. Those are great examples, Keith. So let's talk about those things. Um, the guts of both these units, regardless of the color, are really identical at this point. And when I say the guts, I mean, you know, the, the sprayer assemblies. So these units, the top part. Yeah, you know, and I was going to comment on that exactly just a moment ago when you held those bottles up so that people could see them side by side. You know, other than the lid connection to the bottle and obviously the bottle itself, the the plumbing of those valve assemblies is pretty much identical, different colors, but basically the same. And that really explains why they perform so similarly. So let's cover what's different about each. Also, keep in mind that some of the advantages or disadvantages will depend on your point of view. Yeah, so the first and the most obvious difference between the S and the Pro is the bottle shape, its design and, and the color. The S is tall with a medium width base, right? Uh, so it might give you the feeling that it's bigger, even though it's not, basically holds the same amount of liquid. Uh, and you probably have to take more care not to knock it over because it's kind of got a smaller base. The Pro is shorter and stubbier with a very wide base that gives good stability. Now, that taller, sleeker design also helps with gripping the bottle, especially the molded grip near the uh, measurement markings. So the Pro does have the indentation on the bottom for grip, so your fingers can kind of snuggle up into those little uh, indentations. Uh, but the S design, nevertheless, still is a bit easier to grab. These considerations pretty much are eliminated once you have the head attached, because then you're not holding the bottle anymore. <laughs> Um, that really just becomes the carrying point for both of these. And once, once the device is mounted to your pressure washer gun, it doesn't matter. Those are all great points, Keith. Um, so the plastic for the S seems like it might be a little bit more, you know, prone to, uh, to breaking. Um, you know, that's maybe, uh, with it being the clear plastic versus the opaque, um, you know, and this, you can kind of feel the difference on the plastics that this feels like it's a little thicker and I don't know, maybe clear plastic is, is just one of those things that uh, inherently is made a little bit more fragile. Now, depending on, um, you know, your, the color of your, your uh, soap that you're using, the, uh, the lines on the pro are, are definitely harder to see as you're, you know, filling the bottles uh, versus on the clear. Uh, obviously, even with water, you can see very, uh, plainly what level you're you're at. So, um, you know, once you add soap, uh, as long as it is colored, it, it probably is going to mitigate that a little bit with the pro uh, version. But, uh, you know, something to keep in mind. Hey, you know, I can totally see that. See what I did there? Uh, anyway, there is also something almost magical about seeing the solution mixed up in the S, right? You can really tell if you've gotten the soap and water uh, you know, completely homogenized with each other. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's funny because I was actually thinking the same thing. Um, it's almost, you know, like the, the lava lamps of the phone cannon uh, world. Both these devices ship um, with the, uh, the 1.25 millimeter uh, orifice installed uh, and as an added bonus, the 1.1 uh, millimeter orifice so that uh, you can match that with the capabilities of your pressure washer. You'll probably want to start with the 1.25 millimeter, and then, you know, if you're not really happy with the foam thickness you're getting, uh, move that back to the 1.1 millimeter. Uh, just make sure that you're watching, you know, if you, like, start tripping breakers or anything like that in your house, then then definitely, you know, switch that back to the, the 1.25. Yeah, so let's talk about connecting the the bottle to the head valve assemblies on, on each of them. The S is really good, right? It has that really slick twist connect mechanism. It's not even a full rotation's worth of twisting. It's, uh, it's less than a half a rotation. And once you do it, you know you've got it. It's like locked into place and you're, you know you're done, right? So it's, it's good in that way. And I have to say that's my favorite feature. Um, now, the other one, the older MJJC Pro, V2, it, it, it's a lot of twisting. And once you get to the end, you're not even really sure you're at the end because it's it's really uh, seating up against a, a rubber grommet or a rubber seal, which probably good that there is a rubber seal, but you don't necessarily know when you're done, right? Because you can get it tight and, whoa, 
I'll just make it a little tighter and you know that rubber seal just will keep compressing a little bit more. So it, there's less confidence, I guess, that you're actually done. So yeah, I kind of like the way the, the S uh, mechanism works the best. I completely agree. You know when you're at the stopping point on the S. The Pro uses, you know, the good old fashioned twist until I think I can't anymore method. Now, I know you like the wider opening of the Pro than the S's slightly smaller one. Uh, that makes sense. I believe you measured the S at just under one and a half inches and the Pro at just under two inches. Um, so, you know, for me, I definitely could use the extra margin of error when pouring liquids. I don't always have a, a funnel handy. Right. Um, so with, with some care, though, it's not really a major issue, though. S doesn't allow you to, uh, you know, tip the bottle upside down like the Pro does. Um, that means you may want to measure and mix uh, in, in something else other than the, uh, the bottle itself. Um, or you could purchase the, uh, the lid for the, uh, the Model S and, uh, you know, mix it up there and, uh, you know, swap out that lid to prevent... Uh, any spills and remove the need to mix in a separate container. Yeah, that sounds like a great $10 spent there, honestly. Sp speaking of $10 spent, I believe you purchased a couple of new chemical suction tubes or intake tubes, as I like to call them, or straws, as you like to call them. I believe you bought uh, an additional bottle with lid for the Pro so that you can store your excess soap uh, if you don't need it uh, for the all for the car that you happen to be washing right then and there. Exactly. So you've mentioned some of the many replacement parts and add-ons available. They sell many items to maintain your device as well as enhance the experience should you uh, choose to do so. Yeah, that is huge. That's huge for me. I mean, there's few things I hate more than having a seal, a gasket, or some critical part that's a wear item for a device just go bad. And then the manufacturer doesn't sell replacements for those things. I mean... If it's a gasket, yeah, I could run to Home Depot and, you know, do a bunch of measurements and take some guesses and hope it works out. But you can't really do that with the bottle necessarily. And, you know, if your kid knocks a bottle on the ground and it breaks, well, that's no fault of the manufacturer per se, right? But, you know, having those spare parts available when things go wrong, that's very useful because then you don't have to buy a whole new unit. Oh, that can be the worst. I hate when you have an expensive item with no spare or replacement parts. Really, you think about it, the manufacturers have to know what they're doing. So, nicely done, MJJC, for giving us access to everything we need to keep our devices up and running their best and giving us uh, some nice add-on options as well. So, before we go, let's take a quick look at the Mustang foaming you did with the Foam Cannon S. I know you like to dial in the shape of the spray a little bit for the Mustang uh, in order to avoid soaping the convertible top as much as it would otherwise be. And how did you like the controls for shaping it? Yeah, once again, the uh, the device um, uses the same you know mechanism that the uh, the Pro does um, to control the fan, right, or the um, and the orientation of the foam spray. Um, some people. You know, might be wondering why I don't like to soap the convertible top. What I find is um, putting the soap on a fabric, right? So it's not like a vinyl top, but it is a fabric top. It That soap is really, really hard to rinse out of the top. So I, I avoid soaping the top as much as possible. Um, I will tell you that those controls for changing the shape and the direction of the, uh, of the foam spray, they, they work like a charm. Uh, the top mechanism to control, you know, the, the mix... Uh, works the exact same way, and it it uh, you know does a great job. But to be perfectly honest, I on both these devices keep them um, fully on the maximum foam setting. Oh, man, I have to say this race between these two foam cannons, it's too close to call. I mean, sometimes you know people review items and they say it depends on personal preference, but they're really just trying to be kind. And normally by this point in the episode, I can kind of tell, and I suspect our viewers can kind of guess where we're going to go as well. But here, I don't know. I'd say it's kind of a photo finish. I have to say, I'm I'm in the same boat with you, Keith. Uh, since the foam production is basically the same, or at least it would be if my, uh, you know, Pro 2 uh, didn't need a little maintenance after two years of time and, you know, my, my uh, poor practices, um, you know, it's really going to come down to other factors. Um, I really don't think you can go wrong 
you know, purchasing either one of these devices. Well, there you have it. We managed to not make a decision and feel great about it. Yes, that is what we like to call a win-win. Uh, we have affiliate links for the foam cannons in our description, as well as a link to the MJJC website if you want to browse that and uh, purchase some extras. Um, I would definitely purchase replacement parts and extras uh, like the bottles directly from MJJC to avoid any knockoff uh, potential. Yeah, absolutely. And if you did get some value from our video and want to purchase either of these foam cannons, we would appreciate you using the affiliate links as it does help support our channel. Our channel needs support and it doesn't cost you anything extra to do this. Also, we'd appreciate a like to tell the algorithm others should see this video too. Yeah, I'm gonna give the video a like and while you're giving the video a like as well, give us a comment. Comment on which of these foam cannons you would pick and why. I'm curious about that, honestly. And you might as well subscribe while you're at it, of course, uh, if you don't already subscribe. And lastly, give that bell a little jingle so uh, you're notified of when we make new videos. Thanks for joining us today, and you'll see Keith and Bruce in the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.